IL itself and CLR. Okay, and the core components. Once we get into this, uh, um, the core, when we see the, what are the main two things that you can talk about .NET Framework, there are two things. One is the CLR and the base class library. Okay, and base class library, as have been, uh, as we see in other slides, it's a, uh, it's a combination of or uh, a package of different DLLs. Uh, the the most important one is the MS Core Lib, and of course System DLL are a couple of additional uh, DLLs that are the that comes along as part of the base class library. By default, uh, if you create any solution or project in Visual Studio, you don't have to actually refer to the MS Core Lib. Uh, always remember this is a core uh, Microsoft Core library. That's what it stands for, and it's available. Uh, of course, it's available in this part. If you, uh, in my machine, I'm going to see Windows. Okay, FYI, uh, I'm using uh, Windows 7. If at all you're not having uh, Windows 7, then uh, don't try to look up the same way that I'm trying to look up. It's going to be a little different, but it's going to be still be uh, available anyway. So I have the framework again. I have uh, framework uh, 64 as well and framework this. Um, of course, this is the 86 uh, uh, infrastructure. Um, and uh, within this, I have the version specific. And as I've been saying, so MS Core Lib is, a, is part of the 2.0 uh, version. So within this folder, you will see all these core libraries uh, DLLs. The base class library, whatever we have been talking about, so these are the set of the uh, DLLs, like the system.dll, MS Core, where is MS Core? Yeah, you have so many MS cores, but MS core lib is what the most important one. So keep this in mind. So this is the core library, MS core lib, uh, that is uh, that contains all the data types that we are normally used in, um, and many other things. Uh, we will see what it has inside. We can definitely see what it has inside a given DLL. Um, We'll go there very soon. Okay, so that's the base class library, so which is available as part of the um, your installer. And um, yeah, CLR. We're going to see, um, of course, again. So these are the different uh, uh, types of uh, libraries available to do to do different uh, kind types of programs, uh, like the it contains the data structures, high management, Windows forms, web forms and controls. Uh, data access, multi-threading, remoting, reflections. We'll see uh, what is reflection at the end of this session today. Anyway, okay, so we'll see what is a CLR. Common language runtime is the uh, is the foundation of the .NET framework. Runtime is an agent that manages code at execution. So if you know what is an operating system, I think most of you are um, computer graduates and uh, I need not expand more on the um, the operating system side. So it's literally uh, what all an operating system can do. It's managing your threads, processes, memory, allocation, deallocation, and um, and so on. So he, he, of course your hardware peripherals, uh, uh, input devices, and output devices, and so on. Um, so CLR is actually interacting with the operating system. In other words, it's an intermediate um, runtime to execute a .NET program, as simple as that. It's a runtime to run a .NET program uh, that's a CLR. And in order to do that, what it needs to do is it needs to translate the uh, intermediate language and also do the policy checks on the security side, like the security, uh, code access security we were talking about. We'll see more uh, internals of a CLR uh, down the line, uh, but for, for today's as an introductory session, uh, we're going to keep it limit uh, CLR as a runtime to run a given .NET program. And it's a code management. Um, code management is a fundamental principle of the uh, runtime. As you see, so each and every line of code that's coming with MSIL, it's going to translate into the uh, machine bit code information and then pass it on or marshal the instructions to the operating system to fire it up in the operating system side. So that's what the uh, intermediate role that CLR is going to perform. And in addition to that, it does a lot of other things. It pretty much manages the execution of your .NET program. 
and with respect to the management of the execution pro, uh, executing program, uh, it starts with uh, reading out the DLL information and allocating the memory uh, or creating the required number of threads or processes into the memory uh, in the process area and also manage the uh, the memory allocation, the allocation cycle throughout using the garbage collector internally and then of course when the, when the program gets terminated it also uh, comes into play of removing the process and threads out of the system and bringing the application to a termination stage. So the, all that uh, starting to the end stage of CLR is going to make it uh, possible. And um, it's the runtime, just like any other programs uh, you normally refer to. For example, if you see VB6 uh, applications or C application or C++ applications, they all have their own runtime. So that means the runtime library set is definitely required for those programs to run on a given program. And here comes another two important aspects uh, when we talk about the CLR. So one is the, uh, the managed code and the other one is an unmanaged code. So this is a very, very common question people do ask. What is the difference between a managed code and an unmanaged code? Okay, in simple, uh, managed code is the code that tar targets the CLR. Um, in other words, whatever CLR can understand um, and uh, run in its own domain, it's called a managed code, in simple. Uh, it could be a C sharp program, it could be a .NET program, it could be a F sharp, it could be a Python, it could be any other .NET based program. Ultimately, it should be an intermediate language. Okay, so MSIL is a managed code, in other words. So anything is MSIL is a managed code. So that means uh, your C sharp is a managed code, your .NET is a VB .NET is a managed code, F sharp is a managed code. And what is unmanaged code? code that does not target the CLR is an unmanaged code. That means whatever CLR cannot manage or do not manage or do not understand is an unmanaged code. That means uh, a non-MSIL is an uh, unmanaged code. For example, uh, a C program, if you're running a C program, it doesn't run under CLR domain. It run in its own runtime. If you're running a VB6 programs, it doesn't run in under CLR, CLR domain. It runs in its own runtime. If you're running a C++ program, it's the same thing, and so on. So uh, if you're running a dotted program, it runs within the CLR domain. So that means a dotted program is a um, managed code. And whereas uh, the others like C or C++ or VB6 programs, they are unmanaged code or even COBOL or Python or whatever uh, things you can name, uh, which are not MSIL. Okay, so I hope that's very clear. Uh, you should never get confused with what is a managed code and unmanaged code. Uh, managed keyword itself uh, refers to the CLR. Okay, so if you remember that, that's uh, the key thing. And uh, full form of CLR is a common language runtime. There's more information about the CLR in this slide. Uh, and it forms uh, the heart of the .NET framework. All languages uh, have runtime, as we have been uh, discussing. For example, VC++ has a um, uh, runtime called MSCRT 40.dll. VB6 has a uh, similar DLL, and so on. So respectively, CLR is a runtime for .NET programs. And it internally has a lot of uh, very, very core components called the garbage collection and we will be having a one complete session just to talk about garbage collection. Okay, so I will be, this is one of the uh, area wherein uh, I will take you into a deep dive because that's very, very important topic and also sometimes that's the most least understood topic um, and least ignored topic, in other words, the most ignored topic. Uh, so it's a very, very important topic and uh, we will be taking a one complete session, that means almost two hours session uh, into garbage collection. And of course CLR uses the garbage GC to automatically uh, allocate and deallocate the memory, uh, in other words, the efficient man memory management. And code access security is another thing. So CAS grants rights to programs depending on the security configuration of the machine. So once you write a .NET program, you can actually specify um, 
what are the kind of operations that this program can run. Uh, you, spe you can specify a security policy. Uh, for example, I uh, will take a very good example as if, you're, if your program is actually going to uh, handle a f file I.O. operations like creating a file, deleting a file or uh, you know truncating or manipulating file system in your machine then uh, the such programs do need uh, a authorization or a policy uh, c configured for the given application for the, for the given comp program to run in your machine. Uh, that's uh, as part of the code access security. So when the CLR loads a given DLL and it's uh, it tries, first thing it's going to do is going to match the policy required for the given program versus the policy set up in the language uh, in the .NET uh, set up the in on the given machine. If both doesn't match, then it's not going to let the program run on the machine. So that means you need to actually make that given program trusted in your machine to do the file I/O operations. So then only your program can actually run safely in that given environment. So that kind of a, a check is done by uh, by the CAS Code Access Security. And as part of the security measure, again um, down the line we'll see more of that. Um, um, so for now we're going to keep it simple and the code verification and code verification is a very very important thing that happens as part of the CLR executing a given dot program what it actually makes sure is uh, intelligently uh, it's going to walk through each and every line of code where in we where in the program is uh, creating a memory and using a memory location if at all it sees any line of path or any code path uh, which is trying to read a memory location which is not created by the program then it's not it's not going to let you run the program so what it ideally indicates is if you're trying to access the memory locations other than within your own program um, uh, area domain area so what it indicates that you're trying to access the memory area of the uh, other programs in the given operating system. So that is likely to be a uh, risk factor for the application. So that's not a safe program to run on your machine. So it's not going to run the program. But again, so a good example for that to do is the pointers concept. If you know the language wise C++ and C supports pointers. Whereas the .NET programs do not support pointers, but that's a again uh, just a quote, okay, within double quotes I can put it as. But using C sharp, you can have an uh, you can write uh, uh, unsafe programs uh, and also use this pointer concept to uh, access the memory location because in certain cases you do have to write such programs. In such such cases, you need to explicitly convey to the compiler that I am. I am an unsafe code. So what it's going to do is it's going to skip the code verification process for such programs and uh, take it forward. Okay, so that's a different, uh, uh, that, that's all about the code verification process that happens. And this is implicitly uh, is part of the code access security uh, itself. Okay. Um, okay. So